wanted to do a graduate course in, in economics in the 1960s and specialized in development economics. And there one became very much aware because he was uh, the, one of the pioneers of the field. Uh, they were, you know, with, with ideas that were contended by others. There were, you know, a couple of other leading lights, but he certainly was one of the dominant figures in this new field of development economics. And uh, he had written uh, this uh, set of articles on development with unlimited supplies of labor, uh, which fired the imagination and provoked some controversy among economists worldwide. It just tells you, you know, that, that uh, Lewis at that time was certainly uh, someone whose work was extensively read and discussed among the leading lights in this new field of development economics. Lewis was the chancellor of the University of Guyana. That was in 1969. And, uh, was presiding over the graduation ceremony and I you know, sought to engage him in some conversation at the end of the ceremony, uh, talking about the work of uh, an economist named William Bomall, a uh, very well-known figure at the time too. And it turned out, you know, Lubel Lewis told me that Bomall was not only his colleague but was his friend and we chatted a bit. But what struck me most of all is when he got down from the platform and sat on the edge of the platform with his legs dangling, uh, talking to me. You know, you, you, you don't expect the great Sir Arthur Lewis to uh, do that, you know, just to make sure that you're talking at more or less the same level and making you feel comfortable. So that was quite, it told me something about the humility of, of Sir Arthur. Lewis was regarded as the authority on international terms of trade between a certain period of, uh, of economic development. Uh, and. Um, so everybody made reference to what Lewis had done, and many tried to uh, crit criticize it in some way or build on it in some way. He had come to give some lectures after getting a Nobel Prize. At the end of one of those, I asked him some questions about terms of trade. I had just read an article by an economist named John Sprouse, uh, which uh, raised some questions about some things that Lewis had, had done on the, on the matter of terms of trade, in fact. And I used that article to raised some questions with uh, Lewis, and he was demurring, you know, sort of more or less saying, well, no, that is not how it, it should be seen, etc., etc. And I persisted, and I think he finally said, listen, this is going on too long. So he said, oh, I know, I know John Sprouse. He was my PhD student, and uh, his statistics were always bad. And then he turned to his wife, he said, Gladys, don't, do you remember John Sprouse? Remember his statistics were always bad? So with that, <laughs> argument was over. <laughs> the Caribbean Studies Association uh, had decided that they would honor Lewis by compiling uh, his various uh, articles and papers. And, and they did so in a very nice letter bound thing and presented it to him as a gift. Uh, he had agreed to appear on the condition that he did not speak, that he was not required to speak. But on receiving the present, he was so overwhelmed by it that he spoke. And he told a little story which I wouldn't you know, bother to go through here, but the essence of it was the feeling of um, only finally, towards the end, being fully appreciated. And by, by the people that you had given your life to. He was the founding uh, president of the Caribbean Development Bank. You know, he uh, started the institution and ensured that it was um, firmly established with the right principles, uh, with the respect for professionalism, and, and, and technical analyses, and, um, and that it, it engendered the respect of the governments. It established a good relationship with the, with the, the various governments that were shareholders of the bank. So I think uh, the, the bank owes Sir Arthur Lewis a lot for that foundation that he, he laid. 
he made such a big contribution to development policy in the Caribbean and continued to do so while he was president of the bank. He would, you know, uh, make some timely interventions, sometimes through articles in the newspapers, that would uh, start a debate, a policy debate, along the, the right lines. And uh, that is important not only for this, the CDB, which is, of course, a development institution in charge with finance and Caribbean development, but for the wider Caribbean community uh, to, to, to have at its disposal a set of well worked out ideas uh, about how we should develop. Uh, he also uh, advised in Africa, you know, several governments at a critical stage uh, when they were newly independent. So this is a man whose contribution globally are immense. And by virtue of being West Indian, he brought uh, uh, an element of a wider recognition to the West Indies and, and validation of the West, West Indian uh, potential than I think many other individuals uh, were able to do. Thank you.